Rusty brown leaves rustle on the ancient new tree. Footsteps are heard crunching on the grey white gravel path. The gothic wrought iron gates open with ear spitting creak. We come upon a shapeless shadow sitting on a chair made of human skulls. Beside this grim chair is a, t- is a table on which a decapitated hand has been made into a candle holder. The candle sticks are in maze of fingers dipped in wax and wicks placed on top. Your host is ready to read tonight's fiendish tale for your delight. In a faraway place in the desert, a cinema screen has been erected to watch a film about a true account about how a true rather inanimate object tire came to life unexpectedly. On its wake it caused unspeakable horrific acts to its victims. Why it is this is so no one really knows as there is no reason as life itself is full of no reason. And two, a lot of people make no sense at all, including the author of this tale. The audience sits down, lights lower, the plutonium darkness envelops the desert. As the film starts, the scene is set. A rubber tire is lying on the sand, abandoned by their driver. Or the vehicle of which he once belonged, the tyre wanted to exist to be alive. Suddenly the tyre stood upright and wanted a name, so he called himself Robert, for he felt he had always been a Robert. Robert sees the desert animals and animate objects and rocks and wishes he could destroy them. And out of blue, he gets the power of telekinesis and practices it on the rocks and cacti at, at them from blowing them up at will. He gets bored of this. He decided to take his built-up frustration on the desert animals, making them to blow up. He really got a kick out of seeing their skin and fragments and shattered bones fly through the air. The best part was when they, they crashed into the, the sand, leaving a trail of iron rich crimson blood. Robert is starting to get a bloodlust and wishes to, to hurt more. To more hurt. At this point, fate intervenes as the car is making a way to, on the desert highway. The Robert uses the power to stop the driver's car. But he only manages to stall the car, much to the surprise of the lady driver behind the wheel. Wham! Robert is run down by a nearby truck. He's beginning to break slow down to assist the driver in the stalled car. His mother taught the lorry driver to be a gentleman and aid others when he could. The lorry driver stopped. The driver got out to assist. But it was too late as the woman driver manages to restart the old car and go back on her journey. In just that moment, the lorry driver was thrown in the air like a rag doll as he landed breaking some bones. The last thing he saw and felt before the brief moment of death was a rubber tire rolling over and over his skull. A distinctive crack of the skull, and Robert smiled to himself to see the flash of the brain revealed. Robert then carried along the highway. He was not worried about the cadaver, as the desert would deal with it in his, as it had done for centuries, eaten by vultures, bones bleached by the white hot sun, bones breaking down into dust, the dust mixing with the golden sand, and lorry gone. Only more lorry driver gone, only mourned by the ones he had lo- once loved. Robert rolls along for a while until the highway leads the motel. A car that escaped him is parked near one of the rooms. Robert, being somewhat impatient, decides to search for the driver of said car, as he want, has revenge on his mind. So he enters the room as he does, but realizes he's not 
is is next to his intended victim and instead rolling on top speed runs over the motel chambermaid as he entered the room he runs over her several times leaving a dead body with a heavily mutilated unrecognizable face there was in his there was in his story this was where in the story enters sheriff chad to investigate the murders so far committed the man responsible for the cinema screen in the desert just in case you're wondering the poor filming audience had been starving in the desert for two days were given a turkey by one of the sheriff Craig's Chad's deputies but fortunately for those poor wretches it turns out the turkey was laced with unknown poison sorry for that interval i hope you enjoyed your popcorn and ice lollies it's back to the tale as we go as if you've not gone away you know, to, to do something different if it is so you'll miss the ending i promise it will not be a hollywood run Sheriff chad is about to leave the scene of the crime when he bears hears of my mighty ear splitting screaming coming in from the hotel manager's office he runs well, I should say waltz quickly to the scene as it long past his prime due to too many donuts. His arrival has seen his witnesses Robert finishing his final roll over the mutilated remains of once good looking manager. Sheriff Chad, Chad only knew this by her identity badge. Sheriff Chad then calls one of his deputies to put alert on a, for a murderous rubber tire, and after a few minutes of howling, laughing, and asking if he'd been drinking, if only would the threat have made be made redundant, the deputy did as he was told. Much further down the road, Robert is disgusted to see people laughing and drinking of a pile of fellow tires being burnt like the witches of old. This sends him into wild frenzy of a killing spree, which lasts three days with a total of ten bodies left behind all heads crushed in tire marks all over the cadaver remains. It was hard for the families to recognise their former loved ones they had shared their journey in life with. People demanded something that had to be done about this bizarre mass murderer. So his trap was late set up by Sheriff Chad. Sheriff Chad to lure Robert dresses as a mannequin, laid with dynamite to blow him up. Robert fell fails at the falls of said trap. Only but only the mannequin head falls off. The planted dynamite fails to detonate. Somewhere in the distance, to make a point of this failure, a man who is in a wheelchair mocks the box trap. This makes Sheriff Chad raid, not turning into the Hulk kind. He grabs a shotgun from the back of the police car and fires both barrels at Robert afterwards. He tosses Robert Copcus at the mocking man who thinks this is a massive eye to climax to this tale. Normally well, I mean, this would have been the end, but we live in a world of that encourages recycling. Thus, this is a true ending, you, as you see Robert is reincarnated as a tricycle. When he comes, when he sees a man in a wheelchair, he jams himself in the man's wheelchair, pulls him to fall out a railway crossing. Thus, that's how the man ended up sliced in two guts pouring out from his stomach. As Robert, he goes on to recruit an army of tires. But the story is for the second part of the tale. As of sure Chad, he really hated how he got portrayed in the independent Finch film of this tale. He's not making talking to anyone due to to, to the shame. Funny as the film credits a rubber rolls towards the sea. The words You're next. Then this story ends. Was it too bizarre? Stupid? Could I mean I'm an odd but whenever an object really come to life, that's up to you, dear listener. Goodbye. The horse closes his book and smiles his best skull smile. The gate closes is the end of this fiendish tale. See you soon, horror fans.